Right, so let's get started. So this is my second Sarah's weekend weekly summary, um, which I basically said I'll be um, going live between a Friday and a Sunday, just summarising the previous week. Um, some of the challenges that my client breeders experience when breeding. So just to start off with, the dogs that I've scanned in pup this week have been, or uh, well, the breeds that I've scanned in pup, Miniature Schnauzer, Working Cocker Spaniel, Shetland Sheepdog, Toy Poodle, Havanese, Pugs, Chihuahuas, uh, Cavalier, King Charles Spaniels, Labradoodles and Boxers. So we've had some good news and there's a fair few pups due. The biggest litter was that I've scanned with was the Labradoodle, expected with nine. The smallest litters was a Miniature Schnauzer with two, who previously had... Um, I think she had a litter of four or five, I think, before. Um, but the owner did an ovulation test with her, so um, she just picked certain days and she had an inkling she might be a bit too early and it seems that she was. And I scanned a chihuahua with two as well, which um, they can range anything from one to five, uh, just depending actually on the size of the chihuahua. So they were all the, pup, uh, all the bitches that I scanned in pup this week. Misses, I've had a uh, Boston Terrier and um, a couple of French Bulldogs so they've been the misses this week and one of those misses I'm going to come on to in a bit because they're um, not a complex case but maybe um, the breeder could have done a few things differently to increase their chances of success. So the first um, dog I'm going to talk about is a Labradoodle. Um, I was asked to rescan this dog so I'd already scanned her and confirmed her in pup but the owners contacted me because they were a bit worried that um, basically they got two doodles that are due um, and there's only a few days, a week or so in between the maximum. And one of them seems to be getting a lot bigger and the other one wasn't. So they asked me just to come back and rescan the one that didn't seem to be getting bigger just in case something was up. So generally when I'm out scanning, um, I always say to people scan 28 to 35 days from last season, uh, sorry, 28 to 35 days from last mating even. And um, I do offer a progress scan, but generally if you're a seasoned breeder or there's no, the bitch seems healthy and everything's fine, then I wouldn't re-scan. Um, but a lot of new and novice owners like to have a progress scan so that's when they're into the 40 days plus because bone formation has started then so that's sort of when it's a proper baby scan where you can see heads and legs bobbing around and you can see the heartbeat and you can see really well defined organs um, but yeah generally I say if you're a new and novice breeder you might want that um, for basically peace of mind that they're developing as they should or if there's a reason for you to want it. So maybe the female's been unwell, um, she's had discharge, she doesn't seem to be getting bigger, she's had a temperature, then I always think a rescan is worth it. Likewise, with a solo pup, personally, I always think a rescan is worth it just to check everything's developing as it should. Anyway, um, I'd scanned her for six. The owner was concerned that she wasn't developing the same as uh, one of her kennel mates. Um, and in the back of her mind, we know that this female was slightly um, more complex circumstances because she'd actually I'd scanned her before and she delivered, uh, carried and delivered a litter of pups fine. Um, she was mated again and when I scanned her, she had missed and the owner had done the bloods, she had missed. And I also picked up a um, cyst on her kidney. So I always obviously refer to vets because I'm not a vet, so I can't diagnose, but I basically said this isn't typical. I send you a copy of the images, make sure you take her to the vets and get her checked over. Anyway, the vets have done full checks on her and I'm assuming checking kidney function and that kind of thing. And basically they said, yeah, she has got a cyst, which has obviously developed from her first litter to the point of... Uh, mating her again uh, but they were happy for her to be bred from they said it's it, they didn't feel that it was hereditary that it was going to significantly impact her health or the puppies so they're happy for her to be bred from so she was bred from again blood tested caught in pup scandal fine but just didn't seem to be developing as well as the other female anyway i was called out to rescan her and the pups are doing fine so i've scanned her for six all look good to me, all look more than typical. Um, 
and uh, the owner's right she doesn't look huge um she's you know she hasn't got a huge belly on her and she's near the end of gestation and um, so i'm just assuming she's carrying her puppies different to the other bitch because they've been both scanned with roughly the same number as well um but they did seem quite well lined up so sometimes when i go up to scan i say to people oh they could be like a bunch of grapes round by the bladder or they can actually use the whole length of their body and carry the pups all the way up using all of the length of their horns and that's kind of when people say oh they're carrying um pups like in their ribs they're not they're just using the whole length of their body to carry the pups and i think she was just using the whole length of her body to carry the pups and maybe the other bitch is just carrying them quite low down um and hence she's just looking a bit chunkier than than the other girl but the rescan show pups are fine so we're taking it as all is good and uh and this is a seasoned breeder breeder she had a slight panic and a slight wobble but i said no all the pups are fine um, the second dog that I've had this week, uh, which is one of the misses that I previously mentioned. Um, like I say, if you've got any questions or anything like that, then just like ask, type away or uh, give us a thumbs up and just let me know you're there. Um, but yeah, the French Bulldog. So I scanned her for a miss and when I scan for a miss, I always ask a few questions about I shed a litter before, is the stud proven, did you blood test, did you ovulation test, all that kind of stuff. Um, and basically they had done everything they needed to do. So they um, had progesterone ovulation tested, so with bloods, wasn't by me, by somebody else. Um, they had AI'd um, and they, the only thing that was a bit weird to me is the person that blood tested also did the AI in, which isn't weird. But the weird thing was is they AI'd and then I think it was about, three days later or they left it left it at least two days and then they ai'd again which is a bit weird because if you're progesterone blood testing the whole point is that you find ovulation so you know exactly when to mate and generally if you're going to do a second mating it would be 24 hours after you wouldn't necessarily leave it any longer because the cell the eggs are only dying so i thought it was a bit weird Anyway, so I asked them, what were your numbers? What did the person say to you? Like, what did they advise you to do? When did they advise you to make that kind of stuff? Which the owners couldn't really recall. They were using a proven stud and it was actually her brother or brother-in-law. Um, so they were, you know, they could do the mating. They were all really flexible and all knew each other. Um, so uh, because she hasn't got the results and she doesn't know what the numbers were, I said to her, she basically, if you're progesterone testing, you need to make sure you have the numbers and you need to know that you understand what those numbers mean. So don't just take it as the person that's giving you the results says mate or not mate. You need to understand why it's not a mate or or why it's a mate. Um, so anyone knows on my website, you can go on www. Um, homescanning.co.uk on there there's a page that we can download a one page progesterone blood testing sheet everything you need to know the ins and out about blood testing and uh, what the numbers are whether it's in nanograms nanomoles because there's two scales so it's a bit like inches and centimeters you need to make sure everyone's talking the same scale but i personally would recommend to anybody that's progesterone blood testing that you save the results that you're given. So personally, when I um, provide results, I will, even if I've had a verbal phone call, I will always text what the results is. Normally it's just on, um, through just a normal text message, but if the person's contacted me through like Facebook, then I do it on Facebook. Whatever way you contact me, generally, I try to reply the same way. Um, but I always send a text so you can see and you can look back as to um basically what those numbers were and whether it makes sense with the advice that you're given uh if they don't text then i would ask ask them say can you just text that to me or can you send me a copy of the, the report so for instance i'm just going to pull this because you're you lot are actually sitting on my blood testing machine um but for instance so i've just literally this is the results that my mach machine spits out so basically i could just take a picture of that and send it and now it's quite important about having these reports because what it will tell you 
as far as I know my machine does so I'm assuming all machines do this it tells you when the machine was last calibrated it tells you like on here the name of the dog because I put that into the machine it tells me what time those um, results were come off of the machine when the results were run so there is no doubt that well apart from me lying and putting a different dog's blood in the machine everything else tallies up that this is this dog's um, blood and I put it in that machine when I said I did and this report proves it um, because you're putting a lot of trust into a company to run your bloods correctly and now so we have a lot of independent labs about and I'm I'm all for that because I'm one of them um, but the difference being going back to like I, IDEX days they have particular medical standards that they have to adhere to and they could not breach them it you know they'd be fined and all sorts if they didn't so their machines have to be calibrated they have to be kept in rooms of certain temperatures you know the, the kits if they've expired they don't use them more anymore and that kind of thing but obviously when it's an independent lab who's doing that check-in so i'm not they're not bad but i'm just you need to have trust in that company that you're using so for me if you're using them for the first time i would want to have evidence of of this and once you know that you've been using that lab and you're getting successful results then you'd be like okay be a bit more flexible and you know now I understand the numbers a bit more as well I'm happy with a text but personally if I was using a lab that I've never used before I would be asking say can you send me whatsapp me a copy of the results or an email or whatever just so you can scrutinize that information that's on there because at the end of the day somebody could just take your blood chuck it in the bin and make up a number <laughs> as i say because they're not governed as tightly so but obviously from a reputation point of view you would hope that that's not what they're doing and that they are keeping a well calibrated machine but until you know that until you have confidence in them as a company providing that service personally that's what i would be asking okay so in regards to that french bulldog um she hasn't got a clue what the numbers were and why they left such a big gap in between uh, apparently uh, the people did um semen check him and he was all good so to me it might just be a classic signs of just timing wasn't right which shouldn't be the case because she blood tested um, but she was a maiden female and from my experience I scan a lot of females and they just miss it, and you can do everything right that you should do but they just miss and for me my, I tend to think it's their mental mentality hasn't yet caught up with their physical body they're not in that headspace to become a mum so they tend to miss and the, the owners tend to do the same exactly again and then they catch same stud dogs you know same procedures they don't change anything and she catches so for me a maiden miss is an end of the world stuff um, but I just wanted to share that if you are progesterone blood testing um, you need to learn what the numbers are and that information is out there um, readily available so just put a little bit of effort into none, knowing the numbers understanding them because you're going to benefit in the long run uh, just a question from Carla uh, how often do you scan and they are not pregnant right so obviously I keep stats on, on everything and I could quickly, because I'm a bit of a geek and I've got my laptop, my spreadsheet here. What you've got to bear in mind is obviously um, the people that use me, um, they want to know. It's not like a fair description. It's not a fair collection of breeders in the world because the people that decide to scan are already the people that are a bit more proactive in wanting pups or not if that makes sense so it's not like a true reflection but obviously i do cover uh, I've, well i've scanned i updated my facebook page i've scanned over 2000 dogs now so i'm quite pleased with my little mini milestone and of that 2000 um 72 percent were confirmed in pup and 28 percent were misses but what you've got to bear in mind also is I go to places where they don't want them to be in pup. <laughs> so it's like an accidental mating or unintentional mating and they're praying like, please, let's hope she's not. And generally they tend to be, which is typical. Um, so, yeah, not not everybody wants me to say, yes, they she's in pup. But yeah, so that's just a rough idea. 72 percent in pup um, and 28 percent misses. So more than 50 50 for sure but as i say it's not a true reflection of the breeders out there breeding because there are still a lot of people that just don't scan 
Okay, and then my final um, sort of more complex canine case that I wanted to talk about was a Whippet. So this was a boy, he's five years old, and I was asked to semen test him because the breeder has a bitch that he she wants to put him to. Now, interestingly enough, there's a bit of a history with him because I had progesterone blood tested another female. She was actually... Um, eight years old but she had been given authority from the kennel club to be bred from um and it was last chance saloon basically so the owners went all out did full blood testing and she she did she did ovulate later than your average um so i think it worked out three maybe four tests but we did confirm ovulation off she went to this stud dog and uh, we scanned her and she was missed. So the owners were really gutted because they put a lot of effort in. They got the authority. She was okay to be bred from um, and it didn't work. Now, um, different breeder now wants to use this male, um, but they opted because he's had a previous miss for do some um, fertility testing, just check that he's good. And the boy was easy enough to collect from. Um, when I looked at it, it wasn't the um, like milkiest of collections, but it, it had a tint to it so I thought well his, his five-year-old dog never been used before looks like something's there yet when I put it under the scope microscope there was absolutely nothing um so that's probably why the bitch previously had missed and now the breeder needs to find an alternative luckily she did bloods the same day that we tested him and the bloods are really low so the bitch isn't ready for mating yet um but obviously that if he'd been tested previously then the person that had got this special authority might have had a bit more luck with a different stud dog because she would have known then that he, he wasn't cooking on gas, so to speak. Um, and they're all different. And as I say, this male, I do believe you can sort of have a macro level. So generally, um, the size of the dog's testicles will give you an idea of how fertile they are. Um, just generally how um, sort of promiscuous he is around girls in season, you know, whether he tries to... Um, mount bitches and hump and that kind of thing gives you an idea uh, and to say from a macro perspective it looked like he would be all good we collected from him easy his testicles were a decent size he was a fit and healthy dog um five yeah he's older but he's not ancient um yet when you put it under the scope it was no good um so yeah so that's obviously delayed um that lady's breeding plans but she's now on to plan b so at least she knows that she she knows that she needs to go and find a different dog okay um but just talking about macro checks so i had a chihuahua as well this is a while ago um and the owner had seen them tied at least i'm sure she said like six or eight times she's seen her two chihuahuas tied together and i'd scanned her and she wasn't in pup and the lady was really really disappointed um, so generally I went through my usual, oh, is he made in dog? Um, and I actually said to her, well, how big are his testicles? And she looked at me as if I was a bit of like a weirdo, <laughs> a bit of a weirdo. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't look at my dog's testicles. And I said, well, if I was you, when you get home, just have a look and see how big they are. If they're Diddy, then obviously, and obviously he's a chihuahua, chihuahua anyway, so it's not huge. But if they're Diddy, then... Um, then yeah that he's probably not good to go but if they're a decent size then I said maybe it's just a case of timing or compatibility and you know there are all other things to think about anyway she texts me three days later and said I looked for his testicles and I couldn't find them so I took him to the vets and the vet can't find them either so basically that male had two retained testicles so uh he actually ended up costing her, I think, about £600 because then he had to be booked in to have the testicles located and removed. So obviously he was never going to be fertile because the testicles need to be on the outside of the body because of temperature and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they're just totally in the wrong place. And of course, that kind of issue is also hereditary. So you won't want him to pass that on to his uh, progeny as well. So, as I say, if you're going to use a stud dog, just looking at testicles is a good size and a good idea, but it's not the be all and end all. You still need to put it under a microscope to be sure. So that's it. That's my Sarah's weekend weekly summary. Um, I will be uploading this onto my blog and I do put other stuff on my blog as well. So if I was you, I would check out www.caninefamilyplanner.com forward slash blog. Otherwise, until next week, I'll see you then.